on Sarah Squares here, the nurturing coach. We are going to continue with our three part series looking at narcissistic mothers. Today, we are going to look at the incompetent childhood. In the first video of the series, we looked at the isolated childhood and today we are going to cover incompetent childhood. But first off, let's just remind ourselves what the outcomes are for children with a narcissistic mother. So the outcomes are shame, they become enmeshed with their mother, there's cognitive distortion, definitely develop a very insecure attachment, they can be hypervigilant of threats. They have a very strong inferiority complex. They feel worthless, incredibly insecure as a person and in the world, live in fear, and they are susceptible to other mental illnesses and psychopathology. So, as I said, First video was all about the isolated childhood state. We're going to look at the incompetent childhood. And the final one in the series will be the denial, denied childhood. And these all came about due to a study of children of narcissists from a Norwegian Facebook group. They found these common themes and behaviours. Um, and it's really useful to help if you're if you're either an adult child of a narcissistic mother or your ex is a um, you identify your ex as being a narcissistic mother it helps for you to understand what your child is going through so that you can help support them if you're the adult child it helps you identify areas that you really do need that support but also validates your experience what you've been through so Okay, so the incompetent childhood is characterised by three main types of behaviour. So the first one is nullification, then it's demonstrations of power, and finally, shame. So nullification, the child is never appreciated and they receive no support or encouragement. The parent is perfect, they never make a mistake, but everything the child does is wrong. The child becomes an extension of the mother. They take on all of the emotional feelings, the well-being, the caretaking of their mother. It's important at this point as well to recognise that narcissists fight when and where they choose and in the circumstances that they choose in order to gain advantage. So whenever this child try to stand up for themselves or try to stand up for themselves the narcissist will wait until they're in a position to have the discussion until there's an audience and then they can play either the hero or the victim so demonstrations of power the mother decides what is permitted that includes friends what behavior what clothes they can wear, the rules of their house, everything is decided. I tend to call it like a prison guard kind of a parenting. But even if the child follows them or not, they still get in trouble. There is no, there is no peace for this child. And this unfortunately leads to either pure compliance where they just go along with everything and accept whatever punishment comes their way or rebellion and let's be honest rebellion is the safest option for them in adulthood but as a child that's really scary because they're essentially sticking two fingers up at the only person um around them sometimes because narcissistic mothers are very prone to alienation and so it can be a real a real scary decision to rebel against a narcissistic mother the child who conforms or rebels will feel such a lack of confidence. They will feel so humiliated by their experience and by the mother. And they will internalize all of that criticism and believe themselves to be the problem. There are no boundaries with these types of mothers. The mother is erratic. This leads to that insecure attachment and eventually can lead to a disorganised test because the child, if there's no one else around them to give provide them with some stability, 
then the child only learns that the attachment that they have is scary and unreliable and so that can lead to a disorganized attachment which is a precursor for personality disorders the, do uh, the child has no control whatsoever in their lives but feels totally and utterly trapped they learn that their parent is neither safe nor reliable and shame shame is the byproduct of both of those obviously if you are being um, nullified you are given no support no encouragement then of course you feel shame children internalize that as being it must be something wrong with them they must be the reason that they're not getting any encouragement particularly because us is very good at their game and it to other people so the child just thinks it must be me oh my, oh my god i'm a terrible person that deep shame of that but if they're the opposite of their demonstrations of power um then that child grows up feeling ashamed because they can't do anything right it doesn't matter what they do that the parent the mother is always in control and they feel ashamed of that but they also feel ashamed that they're not good enough they're seemingly not good enough for their parent so they can never do anything right and they believe they have no power and um, their identity becomes based on inferiority, weakness, imperfection, worthlessness and ineffectiveness. Ultimately, their life is either service or suffering or both. Some of the quotes from that to really hammer this home are, she showed in every way that I disappointed her. I had to be non-existent and obedient. It's such a hard place for a child to be. Children need love and stability and unconditional love. So love them no matter what. Believe in them. Teach them that the world is safe. And you do that by teaching them that the people who care for them are safe. And narcissistic mothers are not capable of doing that. And actually take great pleasure in doing the opposite of that in order to control. Um, so, yeah... This series is obviously very difficult. It goes against what we necessarily think mothers are like, but it's really important that we have these discussions and we highlight the reality for so many children. So just a reminder that obviously if this has triggered anything in you, do get support. Um, you can contact us at the Nurturing Coach um, or reach out to someone that you trust that's close by um, because... Although it's validating to know that these have been experienced by other people, it's also that horrible reminder of what you went through. So, final one will be next week. Um, and I hope that you get a lot out of this series. I hope that, like I say, if it's your child that is going through this, that it gives you insight for them to be able to understand how best to support them and how to do the opposite, essentially. So if you have got any value out of this video, please do subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like and comment. And if you click on the little bell, it will send you notifications when our next video is released. Um, I do run free training every Friday in my Facebook community group. This week we're talking about family court. If you do want to join, the link is in the description below. But take care, everyone, and speak soon. Bye-bye.